Three times cosine of 37. So this is V sine. Uh, I'll also don't want to tap into something that you just said. What were you thinking is the final velocity? Zero. All right. That is another common mistake. Why are you saying that the, why are you thinking it's zero? I'm assuming it hits the ground at 2,000 meters. All right. So if it does hit the ground, what else changes in the problem? Change. This is no longer constant as soon as it hits the ground. So the wording of problems is, you know, how we generally word it as it hits the ground 207 meters from the base of the cliff. But when we actually solve it, in order to make it solvable, we have to assume, all right, that 207 meters is technically just before it touches the ground. Or, if you want to do it hits the ground, then I'll have to give you a lot more information. And you quintuple the amount of work you have to do. But if there's popular demand for it. All right, so I'm trying to find V. What equation do I use? Uh, recognize that that V and this V are not the same. Tangent. Pardon? Would you use tangent? Tangent. Tangent? Uh, how? Uh, never mind. I'm thinking of something else. Okay. You have to use the third one. Third one? What am I plugging in for the third one? Am I doing horizontal or vertical? Both. Right on. All right, so my displacement is, uh, write down the formula first, plus one half at squared. And now we plug in our numbers. So horizontally, 207 equals vt cosine theta, uh, cosine 37 degrees plus zero. Vertically, I have negative 50 equals VT sine 37 degrees minus 1.9, no, negative 1.86 T squared. Two equations, two unknowns. It is now solvable. Some students bypass the algebra and go straight to using their calculators to figure out that I got two equations, two unknowns, solving for it. It's not a linear system of equations, so we can't really. Uh, I don't think you can do this with matrices. Well, actually, you, I think you could, but you got to be careful about how you're defining your variables. V and T are not the variables if you're doing it that way. So how do we solve this algebraically? All right, so where do we solve it for first? Horizontally, you want to have that V. And solve for V? Yeah, and substitute in the other one. Um, I think you have to solve for T. T, make T the subject and then so that you can get Z, right? We're going to have a square, a square somewhere. If we solve for T here, then when we plug into this, we're going to get a V squared, which is doable if you like it. But. Or solve for V, and then we just plug it into this one. There's another alternative. Take you a, a hair bit of time, but. So we still, we're thinking solving for t in this equation, don't want to suggest some time. 
I think it was precious and also. Is it this one? Is that you're not sure? Am I giving you credit where I shouldn't? Or B for the first one. Okay. So it's two oh seven over uh, that's roughly point eight, so point eight T. Plug into the second one, so I have negative fifty equals two oh seven over point eight T times T times point six minus one point eight six T squared. Time cancels out. So it's negative fifty equals. Somewhere around 155. And so I get negative 205.25 equals negative 1.86 t squared. t squared equals 205.25 divided by 1.86. Fortunately, the minus signs cancel out. The negative signs didn't cancel out. That would be a clue that something went wrong. <coughs> Mathematically, we'll have two different times here. What are the two times? Plus and minus. Ten point three five. Ten point three five. Well, I got ten point five. Something. Second. That sucker's in there for quite a while. But we haven't solved for v yet. But we have an equation right here. Right, the square root now. Oh, that's no. There's no square root yet. Okay. Ah, okay, I'm just sorry. Sorry. Technically, I have to get that second square. All right, so plus or minus 10 and a half seconds. Last time it was in the air for a little under seven seconds. Now it's in the air for 10, over 10 seconds. We can solve for V. So we get 207 over 0.8 times 10.5. Uh, I guess the this before we make it harder. Chance to write stuff down. Keep it on Mars. Keep the two of seven. Keep that. So, at this point, I'm trusting you have it written down more than once. All right. So now let's go back to the 37. Uh, sorry, go back to the original speed of 40 meters per second. At some angle theta. We'll keep it at 207 meters from the bottom of the cliff. 
And the question is, at what angles do I need to throw it so that it hits 207 meters from the bottom of the cliff? Assuming it's launched at 40 meters per second. To me, this is probably the hardest of the projectile motion problems, but only because I haven't written your test yet, the, the first test yet, so at that point I might discover a new one. <laughs> So what do we know? All right, so oh. Jesse got us part way there. Again, we have partial information here. So how do we solve for theta? narrow it down some, is acceleration constant? Yeah. Okay, that was a little bit louder. So we have cake formulas. No calculus required. What equation, into what equation do we plug? Equations used a lot in projectile motion problems. All right, so if I plug the horizontal in, I have 207 equals V T. Oh, no, we know what T is, uh, V is. So 40 T cosine of theta. Oh, that's it, plus zero. Vertically, I have negative 50 equals 40 T sine of theta minus 1.86 T squared. How do we solve that? I have two equations, two unknowns. Solve for uh, theta. And which equation? So theta is equal to the arc cosine of 207 over 40t. So we're going to do a sine of an arc cosine. Let's see where this gets us. If you don't like this way, you should have spoken up before boss. So I have negative 50 equals 40t sine of arc cosine of 207 over 40t minus 1.86t squared. So what's the sign of an arc cosine? Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so if this is 207 and that's 40t, that angle right there would be the arc cosine. And so this is the square root of 40t squared minus 207 squared. So the sine of that angle would be, oh man, this is gonna be fun. 
negative 50 equals 40t times the square root of 40t squared minus 207 squared divided by 40t minus 1.86t squared. Happy with what we got so far? Do you notice that my fraction here is less than 1? If we ignore the 207, it's equal to 1, but we're subtracting from the numerator, making the numerator smaller than the denominator, and so therefore this fraction is less than 1, which it should be because it's a sign. So how do we solve this? Put it in my calculator and uh, put it in the heights and then solve that one. You just added 50 to both sides? I tried to find the zeros. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's one way, but we can do better than that. Can't you cancel um, 40t? Yep, all right, so 40t cancels out. So I'm now left with, uh, we'll do it here. So I have negative 50 is equal to the square root of 40t squared minus 207 squared minus 1.86t squared. I believe we're going to end up with a fourth order polynomial. <laughs> so how do you solve it when you got a radical here? Flash back to algebra 2. At least that's when I did that kind of stuff. I don't know when this is done anymore. How do you solve for something when you've got a, a radical as one term and none of the other terms are radical? Conjugate? You gotta multiply against the inverse of it? No. Oh, oh, multiply times the conjugate? Um, no, you generally do that when you've got an imaginary. At least that's my experience with that. Or I should say complex, when you have a complex number. But that's only because the math people hate complex numbers than the denominator. Physicists, more open minded about that. Oh, it's been so long, hasn't it? Can you square it? Pardon? I'm not sure if I can. Do you square it? Uh, we have to do something first before we square it. We could square it, but uh, we're squaring a binomial here and treat that as a single term. And so we'd still have the radical over here. Isolate the radical. So 1.86t squared minus 50 equals the square root of 40t squared minus 207 squared. Now you square it. Yeah. So 40t squared minus 207 squared equals that. Uh, I got the last one, plus 2,500. Um, 1.86 squared. Three point four five nine. Three point four five nine t to the fourth power minus, and then 50 times 1.8, oh, 186 t squared. Right now, I'm thinking everyone is in their mind is going awesome. That was awesome. Thanks. Uh, let's get everything over onto the right side. So 40 minus that. So that's this is zero equals 36.541. Nope, nope. I lied. Let's get everything over on the left side over here. So 3.459t to the fourth power minus 226t squared plus 2500 plus 207 squared equals zero. Now what?
How do you solve this? Besides the quartic equation. Does the form look familiar? Complete the square. Excuse me? Complete the square. Oh. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> no, no. I take it back. Oh. <laughs> You would be, in essence, deriving the shorter way of doing it. But I, I tutored a student years ago who, whenever given a problem like this, or something of this ilk, would always complete the square instead of using a quadratic equation. Could you just take uh, two quadratic um, oh, equations okay. and boil it? Oh, like reverse boil it or? yeah, it's still the long way of doing it. Still? Okay. Um, what do we say that T is square yeah. equal to y. Yes. Treat T squared as the variable itself. So that is some variable, and that is that variable squared. So in essence, we're doing the quadratic equation, except we're solving for T squared. So T squared equals 226 plus or minus the square root of 226 squared minus 4 times 3.459. There was a number there. 4, 5, no, nope, 3.459 times, it would be really helpful to know what that last number is, over 2 times 3.459. Uh, we had negative 186 t squared, and then we subtracted 40 t squared from it. I thought that was 1.86. Oh, uh, mm -hmm. if you recall, a plus b squared, a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. And since b is 50, so 2 times 50 is 100, so it's 100 times the 1.86. That's where the 186 comes from. And I'm not opposed to it if it made Carol Sarah somewhere in here. So I, again, it's nice that when people correct me shortly after I make my mistakes, then, you know, at this point, if you find out a mistake I made over here, then I'd like to know. But sooner it would have been better. So what's 2,500 plus 207 squared? Negative 4, 329. One more time? Negative 4, 329. Negative. No, I'm sorry. I didn't want to. Uh, 45,349. Okay. I was typing it wrong. I okay. made a, a minus instead of a plus. Uh, I assume since you're typing it out to get the same thing? Yeah. Okay. Oh, as well. All right. So times 45,000. 349. So we have two values for t squared. And they're both positive. Yeah, it's going to be positive. Um, isn't forty t squared like forty whole forty t whole squared? Like oh, because um, back there so, it's like oh, you're right. It is forty squared. 
Thank you. That's going to change some of the numbers here. So this becomes 1600 T squared. So that 226 has now morphed into negative, oh, I have the negative sign there, 1786. Um, so this is 1786 plus or minus the square root of 1786 squared minus 4 times 3.459 times 45,349 divided by 2 times 3.4. It's your way. Come on, Jesse wants to know. and I heard someone else go, uh-huh. All right, so we get second squared, or? 26.78. 26.78, mm -hmm. second squared. Therefore, time is, now mathematically, we'll have four solutions here because we'll have a positive and a negative, but it's physics, so we're gonna just immediately throw out the negatives. So that'll be 20 something and five something, five point something. 5.17. 5.17? Mm -hmm. So there's one of our answers. 22.1. 22.1 seconds. All right, so we have two answers here. Uh, we actually haven't solved the problem yet. The question was what is theta, but we should have an equation somewhere which tells us, there we go. There's our equation for theta right there. And so we have the arc cosine of 207 divided by 40 times 22.1 and the arc cosine of 207 divided by 40 times 5.17. And Jesse, after all that waiting, was it worth it? Yeah. <laughs> Unlike rides at Carowinds. Hour and a half for a roller coaster. Yeah, it's never worth it. So this is going to be arc cosine. Yes. Not careful. That's going to be a low angle there. So 
to it, like a five degree angle or something. Grace, did you have an answer for one of them? Um, the second one is one, like the one in parentheses is one. One point zero something, zero, 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 nine. So, um, so um, it's math error when I put it in my calculator. Mine is math error too, when I put that in my calculator. Because you can't, oh, oh, oh. you can't. I'm with you. All right, so that doesn't yield a solution. So either we made a mistake somewhere or it's just not possible. And this one right here? We got 1.33, but that doesn't make sense to me. Oh, and yeah. here we got 1.33? I thought okay. it was 1.76. You, you might really be on radians. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh okay. 1.33. 76.5. Yeah, one more time? 76.5. Degrees. Yeah, I'm not buying that. There's got to be a mistake somewhere. Because if I threw it straight down, I would hit but in front of 207. It's, let's see. There's lower acceleration due to gravity. I think there's d squared one zero. Which ones? Where? D squared one zero. D squared. This number right here? Yeah, I, I got a different answer. I don't remember what it was. What'd you get? I don't, I don't remember what it was. <laughs> but it was it was it was different. Whatever it was. Yeah, it was <laughs> much larger. I don't know if I did something wrong, but. If it made it much larger, that would make our denominator larger. Oh, no, it's the second one that causes, is causing the issues. Is the second one adding or subtracting? The subtracting. Um, All right. So I don't know. we could obsess over where the mistake is because uh, I still think there's a mistake somewhere. Uh, let's, I'm going to take you through and. Did you see something? No. Okay. Uh, I'm going to take you through an alternate way of doing it. Uh, I'm not particularly fond of this method right here, but we did get an answer. I'm wondering if the problem was 